Welcome back everyone, Dan here, and welcome back to our little tips tutorial series aimed at absolute beginners, uh, people who are considering just picking up their first flight sim. Uh, for me, I'm going to be using X-Plane 11 for all of these videos, and that is because X-Plane 11 is my preferred flight sim. If you would like to know why that is exactly, the very first video in this series will tell you why I think X-Plane 11 is probably one of the best and probably one that you need to start with. Um, and then this series is going to be split up into very small parts. Uh, each part is going to be aimed at one specific thing that I think is, you know, basically just at random, no particular order, but something that I think will help out your flight experience. Uh, again, aimed at an absolute beginner. I am not a professional pilot, and this is not at all trying to teach you guys how to be a pilot because I'm probably doing a lot of things wrong. This is aimed at the casual gamer like myself that wants to dabble in flight sims a little bit, uh, take off from an airplane, uh, take off from an airport, fly around a little bit, and then land. So that's these are just going to be very, very basic. If you are a professional pilot, you can kind of not worry about that. So this particular video is going to show you uh, how to fix uh, one of the most common problems that I see people having with X-Plane. So X-Plane is awesome. If you saw that first video, you know that I love X-Plane, especially X-Plane 11. It is great. Um, but one of the complaints that I had in particular and that a lot of people have, when you get up at elevation, I think, and many people also agree that the the haze in the air, uh, the haze in the air at the base level game is too thick and you can see too little. And the higher you get up in elevation, the worse that is. Right now I have the autopilot holding us at uh, 3,500 feet above sea level and I am uh, deciding what course we're going. As a matter of fact, I'm going to kind of turn us around a little bit. Uh, not turn us around, but just kind of turn to the right a little bit here. So where we are currently in the world, we are coming up the Florida Keys, heading towards the um, southeastern corner of Florida. You can see that on the GPS down there to the right. Uh, technically the keys are going to be behind us and we're heading up towards the mainland. Um, but why I put us here is because there are a ton of small little beautiful islands that are around the keys and with the uh, with this haze it's really hard and, and I've got the draw distance in the setting uh, supposedly I should be able to see 100 miles out uh, according to the settings in game. Clearly, we cannot see that far because the haze is overwhelming everything out there in the image. So I didn't like that. Many people didn't like that. Because of that, there used to be these workarounds that were pretty hard to use and stuff like that. But the developers have actually put a useful tool, uh, not in the game, but you can download the tool where you can change a lot of characteristics about the game. One of the things that you can change uh, with that tool is how much haze is in the air. You can actually completely turn it off, which I do not recommend because then the game looks funny. But getting rid of some of it is nice. So what I'm going to show you is I've already got this plugin installed. I'm going to show you how to use the uh, plug-in, where you find the actual numbers that you change, and what it looks like after we change it. So any plugins you add into X-Plane 11 is all going to be, if you just scroll, just kind of move your mouse up to the top, this tool comes up with about a bunch of valuable things. You're going to go to plugins, and this is going to be called, this is going to be called the Data Ref Editor, and you can see right now I've got a couple things installed, and one of them is called Show Art Controls. So if we download the Data Ref Editor, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, and where to get that from and also the link will be in the description but once you get that in the game you go to show art controls when you click on that it brings up this scary list of all this stuff if you're just here to remove the haze then don't mess with any of this other stuff I, I want to emphasize don't touch any of this stuff unless you know exactly what it does guys I don't touch anything but one thing in here I don't want to accidentally mess up the game I will say though if you do accidentally change something and you mess it up this data ref editor will restart every time the game restarts so it will default everything back what we're looking for is the this haze effect which they actually call fog and so there is a value in here that you can adjust and you just scroll down with this bar on the right and the value we're looking for is called fog fog be gone okay fog fog be gone don't mess with anything else as you can see currently the game has this value set to 1.0 that's the default value you just double click on the number 
I like to back this down to about 0.2. I think that's more realistic, uh, or I can't say that, I don't fly planes, but for me it looks better. Check out how this changes. So that gets rid of a lot of that haze. Uh, now you can go down to the bottom right, there's a close button, and you can see here guys, now, and I'm going to turn us back towards the keys a little bit where there's actually some land, but you can see, you can see much further, this to me looks much more realistic to what you would actually see. I wouldn't turn it completely off because I'm sure that there is, you're going to see some haze, I know that you do, the higher up in elevation you get, but I just think that it was kind of too much the way it was before. So that's where you go, guys. You just go, and I'm going to flip us around and head back down the keys so we can fly back through where we just were for a moment, and you can see the difference of what we were just seeing now that some of that fog is gone. Or I call it haze. For whatever reason in the game, they call it fog. Now, even if you turn the fog be gone a number down to zero, you know, it goes away. But if you turn fog on in the game settings, there still is fogs. So don't mistake those two values. There is an in-game fog that there's a slider that you can adjust. And then that makes it harder or more difficult to see, kind of like more cloud cover. And then in the data ref uh, editor, there is also the fog be gone. Those are two different things. And those numbers and the slider in the settings are going to control two different things. So if you're just looking to get the visual cues back, so you can see further out uh, and not part of the weather system, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change um, that data reference number under fog be gone. So here we are, turned back around, heading back in the other direction, guys, and you can see most of the same stuff we were just looking at, except for you can see the draw distance is much further out now. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot more realistic. I can kind of zoom in and can see the little neighborhoods and stuff. Now, in this area, guys, I am using ortho photos. Um, we are very low. Like I said, we're at 3,500 feet above sea level. So the ortho photos aren't going to look that great from 3,500 feet. Uh, the ortho photos work better for if you're doing like 10,000 plus, 15,000, 20,000 feet for the big planes. Um, but, it, but in my opinion, when you get at that height, the ortho photos work better. What I can kind of tell you, and this is getting off topic here, but uh, I just wanted you to know this is not base content in the game. Uh, let's see here. Let me change, just so I can show you this really quick, guys. Sorry. I'm trying to keep these short, but I want to show you this. Uh, view, external views. Let's go do a chase real quick. And I'm just going to bring us up. Um, oops. Maybe I can't bring us up. I would like to bring us up. Now I should be able to bring us up. So we should be kind of going up a little bit. Anyway, so you can see out there, guys, that's that's the actual ortho imagery off of, uh, in this particular area, I'm using Bing. So what is happening here is there is ortho photos with the um, auto gen placed on top of it. So it looks pretty good. Well, that's for a different video. I'm going to show you how to do all that. This is just to get rid of that fog, guys. I'm going to show you one more time before we get out of here. Go to plugins, data reference edit editor, show art controls and then you're going to scroll down here and you're going to go down to fog and there is fog slash fog be gone and again i'm going to sh i'm going to put this back to what they had at that default value see and it just makes it a lot the draw distance is just not nearly as far like this move us up in the seat um, I mean, it still looks fine. Some people may prefer this. Some people, I've even heard some people say that this looks more realistic, and it may or may not. I don't, I don't really know, guys. I'm not a pilot. But I prefer to be able to see further out because I typically use visual cues to figure out where I am when I'm flying. So I need to be able to see pretty far out and make my adjustments um, ahead of time. But anyways, now what we're going to do is we're going to pause this here, and I am going to show you where you find this tool, because again, it's not available in the game initially, um, but I'm going to show you how you find this tool. And let me move this over here. I will have this link in the description, guys, but I'm just, I brought us to a web browser here. If you just Google X-Plane 11 Data Ref Editor, the very first thing that comes up is the Data Ref Editor. You're just going to click on that, it'll bring you, it'll give you a link. Um, and downloading and installing the data ref editor. Data ref editor can be downloaded here. You're going to click that. It'll bring you to another page. And this is going to bring you to uh, a bunch of stuff that you really don't need to 
look at or mess with, except for in this top box, you need to figure out what your system is. Are you on a 32 or 64 bit uh, Windows machine, or if you're using an older Windows version, there's just the one you need to download. Most people are going to get this first zip file. I'm not going to do this, guys. You know how to do this. If you're coming from a simulation background, you know how to do this stuff, guys. You're going to get the zip file, put the zip file where you want it, and then once you get that zip file, I will show you where you put it in the um, in the file here. Let me move, I'm gonna move this over. Uh, so my Steam folder is under an E drive. Yours is probably gonna be under C, but you go to Steam. You're gonna go to Steam Apps, Common. Uh, you're gonna go to X-Plane 11, and then you're gonna go to, um, let's see here, it was under Resources, I believe. And then under here, there is Plugins. So that's where you're gonna go. You're gonna go Common, whatever, Whatever uh, drive your Steam is on, you're going to go to Steam. Steam Apps, Common, Explain 11, Resources, and then Plugins. And the folder, the entire folder that you get from this zip file, you're just going to literally drop it in this folder, which I did. Obviously, you can see uh, Data Ref Editor right there. You're going to hit X. And then the next time, literally the next time you load up the game, it's going to be available under your plugins, and you're just going to go to Data Reference Editor, Show Art Control, scroll down, and then you can turn it, turn off and turn on the fog. So that's basically way too long of a video to show you how you can change uh, pretty quickly the visuals on the game if you do not like the fog level or the haze level, as I call it. Just get the Data Reference Editor and change that um, you know change that number to your liking, and you can see a lot farther. Um, so there it is. And remember guys, this is, uh, ortho photo, not in-game imagery. So if you fly over the Florida Keys, it will look quite a bit different than this. I do plan on doing another video on how I get that stuff in game also down the road as part of this series. So, uh, be looking out for that if that's something you're interested in. As always guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Um, and I will talk to you in the next one.